In this lecture, we will be examining the history of the Manhattan Project, which is a research and development program led by the United States with some assistance from Canadian and British research facilities that produced the world's first atomic weapon. Part of the backdrop to the Manhattan Project was a letter written by Albert Einstein to U.S. President Franklin Delano Roosevelt in 1939. Uh, he warned of the destructive force of atomic weapons and suggested that uh, that the Nazis were far along on this program. FDR became very concerned and uh, initiated what would become known as the Manhattan Project. The purpose of the Manhattan Project was uh, simply put to uh, find uses of atomic energy for weapons. Uh, FDR approved the program in October of 39. Uh, biggest motivation was the fear of Hitler gaining this technology and research facilities were set up all across the country. This map shows the scope of the project and you can see this really was a national project with facilities from coast to coast. J. Robert Oppenheimer was the scientist in charge of leading the team that would create the bomb. He studied at Harvard, at Cambridge, at the University of Göttingen. Uh, he had taught at uh, UCAL Berkeley, had a very wide range of research interests, although he never won the Nobel Prize. Um, tended to be a researcher who would get very interested in something and move on after a year or two to something else. Um, but this actually worked um, to the benefit of the project. He was, Oppenheimer was able to understand a wide variety of fields and wasn't a narrow uh, specialist in one area. Um, also managing the project, General Leslie Groves who by training was a military engineer. He had a wide range of knowledge, vital in such an interdisciplinary project, not just physics. Um, he understood chemistry, metallurgy, ordnance, engineering. The project employed at its peak about 125,000 workers, many of whom were unaware of exactly what they were working on because they were working on small components or pieces of the project. Um, at the time, it cost over $2 billion dollars. Um, in today's money, this is 2012, something like 25 to 30 billion dollars that would translate into. Here's Oppenheimer with Grobes early on in the project. This is the Oak Ridge National Laboratory in Tennessee, one of the principal facilities and uh, the place at which uranium enrichment was occurring. Um, as the project neared its conclusion, um, the, the death of FDR changed the game a little bit, um, not just because he was an important backer of the project, but because it put into power um, Harry Truman, a man who, though well-intentioned, was not well prepared for the job and uh, certainly lacked um, Roosevelt's diplomatic skills and understanding of international politics. Uh, the first successful test of an atomic weapon occurred at Alamogordo in July of 1945, widely considered to be the beginning of the atomic age. It contained the explosive power of something like 20 kilotons of TNT. The new president, Harry Truman, uh, faced significant political pressures both within his party and the Republican opposition. Um, very inexperienced uh, as a leader. Um, and while it's unfair to call him um, not especially bright, he certainly was ill-prepared for the job that he faced to be suddenly be thrust into international limelight and have to make the kind of decisions he needed to make. Um, at the time, there seemed to be no end in sight to the war with Japan. Japanese seemed to have a strong will to fight despite the heavy losses. Uh, the conventional bombing raids on Japan had continued. And uh, on July 26, 1945, Truman issued a kind of veiled warning, which observers um, with hindsight will know he was referring to the possibility of nuclear war. But the Japanese, unfortunately, um, just thought this was more uh, sort of wartime hyperbole or bluster. Truman faced a number of options he could uh, exercise. He could fight a conventional war and invade Japan. He could continue bombing uh, Japanese cities in the hopes of uh, breaking the will of the Japanese. He could pick an uninhabited island in the Pacific to use as an example of the power of the atomic weapon. He could continue efforts to negotiate a peaceful settlement. He could uh, 
uh, enact a stronger economic blockade, or, as he chose, he could drop the atomic bomb. Some of the factors involved in Truman's de decision making, uh, statistics from um, military advisors suggested that the death toll to American military personnel could be as high as a half million individuals and that uh, there could be millions of deaths um, associated between the civilians and the various military components of the war. Uh, he was concerned, uh, being a staunch anti-communist, about the Soviet Union uh, moving into Japan. So the quicker end of the war would reduce that likelihood. Um, certainly the amount of money that had been spent on the Manhattan Project needed to show some results, especially to critics in Congress who were beginning to question uh, where the money was going. And uh, finally, uh, part of this you have to attribute to Truman's personality. Again, he was kind of impulsive. He was also, um, again, while I, I don't want to criticize him as being um, um, ignorant, he was a person who liked simple solutions, simple explanations. Um, he would get tired um, sometimes in meetings with long drawn out um, complex analyses. He wanted to cut to the chase and solve problems quickly and certainly the atomic bomb um, seemed to be that sort of solution. Uh, two bombs were dropped um, at Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Uh, the Fat Man bomb had the same implosion design as Trinity and there was general confidence that uh, this would um, go off as uh, designed. The little boy uh, bomb had a different design. It uh, was based on the idea that you could explosively force a, a hollow subcritical mass of 235, U-235, um, against a solid target cylinder into a supercritical mass, and then you would initiate this chain reaction, um, as opposed to that uh, explosive-based um, implosion design. This design was not tested in advance, although the, the, the uh, design seemed to be sound, so, but there was no guarantee that this would ever work. On August 6th of 1945, the Enola Gay at B-29 left Tinian Island to deploy the Little Boy Bomb to sent a cloud 50,000 feet in the air. This image shows the blast radius, the hypocenter, uh, with a red, dark red dot in the center of the image. The bomb briefly flashed at a height of 1,800 feet and then it erupted into an enormous fireball, killing uh, approximately 80,000 people in mere seconds. At the center of the uh, blast, uh, temperatures approached a million degrees Celsius. Uh, the bomb produced a fireball diameter of 280 meters in one second. To give you some perspective, that's uh, the size of three football fields. Surface temperatures near the hypocenter approached 4,000 degrees Celsius. The final death toll, we're not quite sure, maybe as high as 170,000 people, mostly civilians. Um, lower estimates suggest perhaps in the 130 to 140,000 range. Um, not all people, of course, died instantly. Some of them lingered for many months. Many of the victims' clothes were burned off by the heat. Wooden structures at the hypocenter spontaneously ignited. For three straight days, the city burned, and within a radius of one mile, all combustible material ignited. This map shows before and after the effects of the bombing. This is another view from the center of the city looking outward. And you can see in the distance the hills and mountains. Hiroshima uh, was uh, in a, 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 a lowland area, and uh, the, the city was almost, at, if you can imagine, a large bowl at the center of the bottom of the bowl. So the blast um, uh, was much more deadly and destructive in Hiroshima because of the, uh, the fact that uh, it went out to the sides of this bowl and rode upward. Um, and then radiated back toward the center. In terms of blast pressure, um, the wind velocity on the ground at the center of the explosion uh, approached 1,000 miles an hour, which is five to six times stronger than the wind generated by the strongest hurricanes. 
In terms of damage to buildings, 85% uh, of buildings within two miles where the atomic bomb exploded at the heart of Hiroshima were destroyed. 90% um, of the buildings in the city were burned or destroyed beyond repair. This chart shows um, by cause the various ways that people died as a result of the explosion in Hiroshima. A heat ray, the blast, the initial radiation, and the resi residual radiation. Finally, at Nagasaki, uh, the Fat Man device was used. Somewhere between 60 and 80,000 people killed. Um, this again was a city on a flatter plain than Hiroshima. So the blast um, diffused a little more uh, quickly and over a wider area. Uh, but still, uh, 60 to 70 percent of the buildings in Nagasaki were destroyed. Uh, this brought about, in part, brought about the uh, surrender of the Japanese on the 14th of August of 1945. The official surrender of the Japanese took place on September 2nd, 1945.